morning and welcome to Word of Faith Church Online. We are so excited that you joined us today because we know that this service is going to be so powerful and anointed and it's going to change your life for the better. Now, I do want to remind everyone that we have a live chat where chat hosts are waiting to talk to you. So go ahead, get engaged in the chat. If you have a prayer request, just jot it down. Our chat hosts will be happy to join their faith together with you. But more importantly, we want everyone to enjoy the service. Well, does it, what does the word say in Romans chapter 8? Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Why? Through him that loved us. Well, good morning. Praise God. Glad to see you. Jesus is Lord. As you saw coming in that we've got a lot of the parking work done now. Hallelujah. We're not complete, but we're, we're uh, 90%. Praise God. Next week, you should be able to come in here with no hindrances next week. Hallelujah. Thank you for putting up with it, but there's no way to, you know, your block roads and block entrances is going to make stuff a little tougher. So I want to thank you for hanging in there, Word of Faith. Thank you for hanging in there, all right? We have received 93% of the 400,000 we were believing for. We thank you for that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I came to the, we had a seniors event here yesterday, so, uh, I, sh so I showed up to it yesterday, and uh, praise God, and uh, when, I, when I came in, I uh, talked to one of the ladies, and she said, she said, well, welcome back from vacation, Bishop. I said, I, I said, well, no, no vacation, baby. I'm out working, what you talking about? <laughs> Amen, God sending me places. And I'm ministering to people. I, in fact, I'm going to show you just a, I'm going to show you a 10 second num, number one there, actually. I'm going to show you, don't, not yet, I'll tell you when. I'm going to show you just a 10 second clip. Now, I ministered uh, to ministers all over the entire nation. They came from the entire nation of Brazil. <laughs> Amen. To well over 2,000 ministers, mostly pastors, but 2,000 ministers. Amen. And so you have to understand, when you minister to one pastor, you minister to a big crowd. If you minister to Keith Butler, you minister to thousands of people. Amen. Right? So when you minister to a couple thousand ministers, amen, they feed the people. That, so don't, that's a big crowd. And that was a nationwide crowd. Amen. amen. But to kind of sum up, kind of sum up how that meeting went, because I did two sessions a day for three days. Okay, amen. We can sum it up in 10 seconds. Ashley, you can run that right now. Watch the guy. This is about the situation. God said. This is what the problem is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. So don't be in a hurry. Let me tell you, every service was like that. Man, they had a track meet every service. Amen. In fact, they put up a sign up there that said, everybody run that way. So they wouldn't collide. Man, I'm telling you, we had a... Praise the Lord. The last night I laid hands on 2,000 ministers that last night. Praise God. Talk to some of them how God changed their lives and ministry. So I want to thank you again for a congregation not being a selfish congregation. Let me do what God called me to do. Okay, amen. When Word of Faith was 10 years old, for those of you who are younger here, new, young, I don't mean by age, but I mean in terms of being here at the church. When Word of Faith was 10 years old, this church is 45 years old. But when Word of Faith was 10 years old, you know, I was a pastor and a teacher uh, and was, in, was uh, ending up my term on the city council and praying about what the Lord wanted me to do next. Okay, amen. And the Lord said to me that I was a, I was a shoe in for re-elect. Uh, polls-wise, I would have been not the president of the council or close. 
Uh, and the uh, Lord said to me, no. He said, I want you to begin to open churches. He said, I want you to do it in the U.S. and urban cities at first. So we, uh, we opened a church in Saginaw. Of course, uh, uh, Ron Chips pastors that church today in Saginaw and then in Atlanta. And then the Lord had us plant churches from California to Florida. Okay, amen. amen. And so people, as I travel the country, I run into people from here all over in all these states where they left this church to retire or the job moved no more, whatever it was, and they're still going to Word of Faith, but they're going to Word of Faith, Florida or California or Mississippi or somewhere else. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in order for me to do that, some of y'all go back. I was doing four sessions a day, flying 2,000 miles. Uh, amen. And some Sundays I just couldn't be here couldn't, to do it. Then the Lord gave me the order. He said, I want you to start doing, and he started giving me nations to do. Amen. So we've been doing that for these years, praise God. Particularly, mainly Europe, but not just Europe. We Africa, praise God, South America, other places the Lord has had us do it. Uh, amen. So when I'm gone... Okay, I'm not gone on vacation. <laughs> Trust me, honey, I don't flown how many thousand miles. Got off the plane, ministered, got back on the plane, flew a couple more, or five, six, seven, or ten hours, or twelve hours. Flew, I don't know how many more thousand miles to go minister someplace else. Show up here before Wednesday night, and I'll be like, hello, Wednesday night service. <laughs> You don't understand, okay? And so when I was just a pastor and teacher, but the Lord promoted me to an apostle office. And so we have Bible schools, we have all over, churches, praise God, ministry in particular, to teach, train ministers. I do that. I train thousands, tens of thousands of ministers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, I'm going to say thank you, but if you're, you're new here, that's why your pastor may be out sometimes. But when I'm out, I send somebody like who I sent you last week. I'll send you a Jim Hockaday or somebody, right? Were you blessed by Jim Hockaday? In fact, I know this, these folks, I send y'all so good, y'all may not want me back, so I may. You know, praise God, so... So, amen. Now, when I came in Thursday uh, to the office, I, 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 had to, I was on the road for two places. I went to Brazil, and then I had to go to D.C. I'm on CUFI board. It's our annual board means to go to that. So when I came into the office, I was finally off the road Thursday. And it was a testimony that came in uh, while I was here that my secretary uh, gave to me that came in apparently this week. So I'm just going to read it to you. A lady called into our prayer center here for prayer. She said she was in the ambulance with her son en route to the hospital. While she was on the phone, the boy died. But she's on, the, she's on the phone praying. But we prayed the prayer of faith that the boy would live and not die, commanding life to come back into his body. When they got to the emergency room, pulled back the sheet, the boy was alive. <laughs> to God be the glory. To God be the glory. For all the things that he has done. Amen. Prayer works. I want to thank the prayer team who serves. Okay, we have 24-hour prayer here. People can call. You don't have nothing to do. You might be somebody who might be on the prayer team. Amen. I want to give you a little bit more about Brazil before I get in, in, into the word today. Praise the Lord. Now, we, are, we have been involved in building a church building uh, there uh, in uh, Zumbi City, Brazil. Ministering out, way out in the, in the country, way out in the bush. Ministering to people. We're building a church building for them. Amen. So show them that building. That, that's a, a little bit of the congregation. That's the building there. Praise the Lord. Okay. Amen. Uh, 
a lady came up to me and the, the ministerial staff there in Brazil came up to me and they said, there's a woman here who walks with her little child. She walks one hour to church every Sunday. Rain, shines, whatever it is. And see there, because it's hot there, and when it rains in the rainy season, it's all mud. See, she trudges through the mud. That's her right there in the mud with her little child. She walks an hour one way to church, and she is dead every week. And we got people who can't drive. And she said to me, I talked to her through an interpreter. She said to me, she said, thank you, Bishop. She said, thank you for this church. It's changed my life. <laughs> amen. <laughs> then, amen, some of my Brazilian babies that we have up there in that church come running up to me and all that, some of them. That boy, that first boy closest to you, that boy, he's eight years old. I think that's him. No, it's the one behind him. Praise God, the one behind him. He comes up to me, and they told me, he said, he's teaching, he's eight years old. He's teaching himself English through cartoons and, you know, watching stuff. He's teaching himself English. He comes up to me, he says, he says, I want you to know, I really like you. <laughs> I hugged the boy. <laughs> then I gave the boy some money. In fact, I gave every one of them kids some money. The whole nursery, I gave them all Brazilian money, you know. And I think the last one I'm, I'm going to show you, praise God, before I get into the word. Amen. I want to show you the sanctuary that, that you helped build. Amen. Yeah. And it's full every Sunday. So your seed, your seed is producing harvest throughout much of the world. And I'm not a showman. I'm not the kind of guy that gets some shows a lot. It's not my personality. You know, you gotta be, I, don't, I don't really like to do that. But amen, from time to time, God, show you a little bit. God, amen, so that you can at least see what we're doing. But this is what you are doing. You are making a difference. Tell your neighbor, you are making a difference. <laughs> if I had time, I'd show you some of the living quarters these people, some of these people live in. You. Man. Thank you, Lord, for being an American. Praise. Anybody ready for the word today? All right, lift, lift your Bible up in the air. Praise God. Get into agreement with me today. Say, this is my Bible. The Bible is God speaking to me. And the Bible is the truth. It instructs me what to believe and how to think and how to speak and how to live and how to have victory. And also in it is the path to eternal life. Hallelujah. Father, once again, we humbly come before the word of the living God. Lord, we thank you that you've given us this word. It is what we need in order to succeed in this life. And we thank you for the spirit of grace himself, the spirit of truth himself, the comforter himself, the Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. Have your way once again, we ask. Speak through these lips of clay unto your people. Praise God. We're open, Lord, to whatever gifts, graces, anointings, manifestations, or demonstrations of the Spirit you would see fit today to grant us. Lord, for whatever you do, we give you and you alone all the glory, honor, and praise. For this we ask in the holy, mighty, matchless, and highest authority of all, Jesus of Nazareth, and by his precious blood, everyone in agreement with this prayer said... Uh, Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Open your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, please. Hallelujah. Now, I'm uh, beginning here. I don't know how long I may be on this. 
Uh, but I'm beginning here on the subject of growing up spiritually. Growing up spiritually. Jesus told us in Mark 4, 13, again, remember the parable of the sower, it was also in Matthew 13, Mark 4, Luke chapter 8. Jesus said in Mark 4, 13, he said over there, kind of gave us a clue. If you don't know this parable, how then will you know all parables? So it, was the, it is the key to understanding, he said, everything else. In other words, he said, if you, if you don't know, you don't understand this one, you don't know nothing. That's what he was saying, right? Okay, amen. By the way, I heard some of y'all was watching and uh, the, on the last night, and you heard me going, Woo! Oh, that's because there's a particular section of Brazil, okay, amen, Syrianchi, and the Syrianchis, they have a yell they do. So when I'm preaching, when I'm going to go, And so that last night, I decided I was going to be Sh Shiriachi. So I was preaching, you know, and then somewhere in there, I go, yeah, 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 and they all doing it. That's why some of y'all, we just heard you yelling. What was you doing? That's what I was doing, all right? Amen. All right. So what I was talking about there, Jesus said something there of real value. Remember there in Mark chapter 4. Everyone in, in the parable of the sower heard the word. But only one of the four, only 25%, was kalos. What's kalos? Kalos is good ground. It's a Greek word. It means beautiful, best, amen, worthy ground. Only one out of four. Amen. So that one out of four is saying what? Because the first individual heard the word all right, uh, but they didn't even receive it, so there was nothing else to say to do. The second one got waylaid, got became offended, scandalized, fell away, backed up, cause of affliction, circumstances, bad circumstances, or persecution, people coming against you. The next one got waylaid by uh, cares of the world, anxiety, worry, or distractions. The next one was deceitfulness of riches. They got deceived by wealth and money and kind of walked away. And then the last one, which is the one which we're kind of getting into a little bit because this is all part of that, was the lust of other things. Lust means an inordinate strong desire for. And it said entering in chokes, as the Greek says here, crowds out the word and made it non-productive. Doesn't mean the word was non-productive. It was just non-productive in them. Are you listening to me? Praise God. And so, uh, if you're a good grounder, you are a minority, real minority. You're only 25% of the body of Christ. Okay? Because 75% of people who hear the word are not good ground. I'm going to say that again. Okay, amen. 75% of people who hear the word are not good ground. They do not produce 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, or at all. And so the reason why they may be believers is for fire insurance. I don't want to go to hell. And I want to make sure that at least I can get into heaven. All right. But they are, they are very little productive value to God on the earth. Amen. And there, there are things that come, come with being in that position, why bad things happen to Christians. And they happen a lot, largely, many of them happen, because of disobedience. Okay. Anyway, so I'm not teaching on that per se. Now here in Galatians chapter 5, however, since we're talking about growing up spiritually, because growing up spiritually does not have anything to do with how long you've been saved. You can be born again and have been saved for 50 years and, and not have grown spiritually one iota. So it's not chronological age. You can only have been born again five years but have done the things necessary to really become the very strong and mature believer. 
quite possible to do. So it has to do with not unlike natural age, natural age, the older you get, wiser you get, at least you're supposed to. You know the old saying, there's no fool like an old fool, right? The older you get, you should, jeez, you should learn something, right? Okay, amen. But spiritually, it's not necessarily true, not necessarily so. So here in Galatians chapter 5, there's a contrast. He starts here with verse 16, he says here. This I say then, and of course, anytime you see this I say then, you need to go back and find out exactly what he's talking about. But to save time, I'm going to start here. Walk in the spirit. Walk in means live in. Okay. Live in the spirit, capital S, and you shall not fulfill or complete the lust of the flesh. That is number five, remember? Lust of other things entering in chokes the word and makes it unfruitful. He said, so walking in the spirit or, praise God, living, or another way to say that, allowing the Holy Spirit to dictate every move you make, all decisions you make, and you check in with the Holy Spirit before you do anything else, praise God, God. will cause you not to operate by the flesh. Because the next couple of verses says, for the lust of the flesh are these, and then it lists all kinds of stuff that's not good. Okay bunch of bad stuff, and at the end of it, it says, and those, those that repeatedly do this shall not enter into the kingdom of God. So walking in the flesh can cause you to lose out and wind up in hell. Okay, amen? Now, we're not going to walk through those today. Amen? But I do, do want you to remember this, because there are always new believers. So if you're newly born again, or you're watching me wherever you're in the world, and you're newly born again, you have to grow. What happens is, when you get born again, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 happens. If any man be in Christ, a new creation. You don't look any different physically, okay, amen? But you are a spirit being. You are not a body and you are not a soul. You are a spirit being that possesses a soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions, and the real you lives in a physical body. The physical body is not who you are. Yet, so many people identify with the physical body as this who they are you are a spirit being the body is nothing but dirt as soon as you leave the body and go either to heaven or hell the body will return back to dirt dirt has five properties it comes in five colors white black red yellow brown all in a clump of dirt so some of you are brown dirt, black dirt, red dirt, yellow dirt, white dirt. Look at your name and say, hello, dirt bag. <laughs> Nothing but dirt. To fight or have pride in dirt. Somebody, um, okay, okay, I'm just going to go there. Uh, somebody sent me a letter a couple weeks ago to my Black History Month. And they said, well, next year, I said, well, I know you brought a, a, a guy a couple years ago for Black History Month. He was, he was a great teacher. He knew everything about Black History, but he was a white man. So next year, Black History Month, get us a black person and a black woman to do it. Let me ask y'all a question. Let's say you went to the University of Michigan, my alma mater. Okay? So if you went to UAM and you happened to be a black professor and you were assigned to teach European studies, and if the University of Michigan said, we will not allow you, although you are more qualified, you know more about European studies than the Europeans. Because this is your area, one of your areas of expertise, okay? And you know more about them. But we are not going to let you do it because you are black. What would y'all say? <laughs> racist, you racist soldier, such. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Come on, wouldn't you? Yeah. You talk about, about how racist you and what happened to you and him. Well, that letter was racist. <laughs> what it means is that the spiritual understanding and growth of the person in question is very small, although they may have been here for 30 years. 
I had nothing to do with nothing. Because well, why did you go to class? To learn. So the white man that I brought here happens to write the textbooks for the state of Texas, is an expert on black history. He knows more about black history than 99.9999 of people on the whole planet. So I brought him here so that you got the best person regardless of a skin color. Because what you're supposed to be doing is trying to get what? Knowledge. Knowledge. You mean tell me black people can be racist? A whole lot of racist black people. Bishop, now get off this, Bishop. You're making us uncomfortable. Good. That's what I'm supposed to do, make you a little bit uncomfortable. I should fry your behind. Where'd you going to learn? When you gonna wake up? I've been saying this for 45 years. When you gonna wake up? Amen. Amen. It's just dirt. <laughs> Let's get into the message now. <laughs> Everybody say, I love, "I love my pastor." He's not afraid to tell us the truth. That's right. All right, now, so there's the production of the flesh. We're going to pick with verse 22. But the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that capital S to tell you, he's talking about the Holy Spirit, and I was starting with, you are not a body, and I got waylaid over there. <laughs> okay, you're not a body, so what happens is, when you get born again, the Holy Spirit is God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming to your spirit. It's the one that recreated you. He's on the inside of you, praise God, and has made you new on the inside. You are a new creation. You're not the same. You may look the same outside, but you are not the same. Amen. Something has happened there. Now, the mind has to be renewed. The Bible says in Romans 12 and many other places. It said to renew your mind with the word of God because your body didn't get saved. In fact, your body is the enemy. Slap that thing. It is the enemy. And in fact, all those works of the flesh that I didn't read, but you go home and read it today, okay, that's what your body wants to do. If left alone, your body will do all of that. Okay, it just depends on just how, how much you've been taught, how much willpower you got, and whatever kind of stuff, what kind of circumstances you may be in, okay, what your emotional state may be at the time. Hallelujah. I mean, how many of you, when you were emotionally bad, then you let your body cause you to do something you shouldn't have done, and then you look back later and went, why did I do that? Was your body, okay? The body is the enemy. Say, the body is the enemy. The enemy. Amen. And so the one that determines, because you are a threefold system, you are a spirit, soul, and body, so the one that will determine which way you go, whether that you follow the body or whether that you follow the brand new spirit that's got the life of God in it, is the soul, the mind. That has to be renewed or trained by the word of God. And so the reason why you have three quarters of Christians who hear the word who are not good ground is because they have little renewing of the mind on a regular basis wow. from the word of God. I didn't say that they sat in church. Okay, renewing of the mind is more than what I do on Sunday. Renewing of the mind is I give you what subject that week you're supposed to meditate on. And then you get in the word of God and take what, what the basis was you got on Sunday. And then you're supposed to meditate that and let God begin to change your whole thinking, your whole way of view and your whole way of ever. Uh, that's what's supposed to happen. That's not what most people do. They even take notes and then they don't open the book again for notes until the next Sunday where they add more notes. But they ain't read the previous notes. Amen. So he said the fruit or production of the spirit is there are nine fruits here. Amen. The Holy Ghost in you, which means you have this in you if you are born again right now, whether you feel like it, whether or not you're looking like it, whether or not you're acting like it, but it's in you. You have love. You have joy. You have peace. You have long suffering. You got gentleness in you. And you got goodness in you. You got faith or faithfulness, praise God, in you. You have meekness in the one we're going to look at here. You have temperance in you. 
Now, the Greek word for temperance is akrata, uh, akrataya, amen, which means self-control. Akrataya, excuse me. Self-control. Self-control is the right use of powers bestowed by God to you. It demands the controlling power of your will under the Holy Spirit. It means self-government. Self-government. It means moderation. Now, akratia, temperance, comes from a, another Greek word associated with, and that's the word kratos. Kratos is the word strength. Remember he, uh, Ephesians 6.10, Finally, my brother, be strong in dumamu. Okay. Be strong, empower yourself in the Lord, in the kratos. There. Strength of his might. See, so this word is associated with that. In other words, what comes along with temperance is kratos. There is strength for you to have self-control. The Holy Ghost, the old timers, when I came up in church, the old timers used to call it keeping power. They used to, think, they used to talk about how the Holy Ghost would keep you. What they're talking about is kratos. In other words, there is a divine supernatural strength that is available unto you unless you cancel it out. Hallelujah. Now turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Give me three hallelujahs this morning. I know some of y'all mad at me already. I've had people leave the church because of what I just said five minutes ago. Okay, amen. And at the same time, they'll be saying they're good ground. There ain't no good ground. In fact, with that attitude, they might not even get into heaven. I'm not joking. You think God putting up with that? All as, a, all as of the devil. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, notice here what he said in verse 25. Praise God. And every man that striveth, underlying, for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now, amen. Now the... Uh, Agonizomai is the Greek word there for strife or mastery. Uh, it means that you endeavor to accomplish something. It means you'll even struggle to do something. Amen. But you have, made, you have made a decision, this is what I am going to do. And I am not going to let affliction, I'm not going to let persecution, I'm not going to let cares of this world, I'm not going to let deceivers of riches, and I'm not going to let lust of other things stop me from doing it. So what he said here was, uh, amen. Every man that striveth for that mastery, temperance is involved in it. He has self-control. He has self-government. or She has moderation. Praise God. In other words, every individual, even today and even in the natural, if you want to talk about uh, Kansas City quarterback Mahomes, or you want to talk about a Michael Jordan, you want to talk about whoever you, the, 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 the Tiger Woods, or, or whoever you want to talk about the top of the top of the top in their profession. They had enough self-control, okay, that they did things necessary enough to become the best in that. They learned how to put the plate, plate back and not eat stuff. They learned how to force their body to get out of bed early in the morning. They learned how to be out there by themselves where everybody else was sleeping and they were, they were out there taking jump shots or throwing footballs or hitting baseballs or running, but they were out there when nobody else was out there and they denied themselves of other things that would keep them from mastering. What he's talking about here, he's talking about, of course, in Greek time, they, they had the races, right? They had the Olympics, Greek Olympics. In fact, let's read a little bit more of the verse. He said, now, now they that do it, that is those that obtain the mastery, endeavor to accomplish something, they do it to obtain a corruptible crown back then, the reef. You've seen it in school. At least most, I don't know about schools today, but they used to teach history. A corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible crown. Ours, praise God, is not a natural crown that fades away. Is incorruptible. Now, I therefore so run, Paul says, not as uncertainly, in other words, not for nothing, I fight 
So fight I, not as one that beats the air. In other words, uh, I am focused. But I keep under my body. Now, hupo piazzo is the word keep under. Hupo piazzo means to hit under the eye. So he said, this is what I do to my body. Bam! I ain't going to punch myself in the eye in this one. There's enough people already trying to do that. All right. <laughs> he said, but I hit myself under the eye. In other words, I will treat my body roughly. And I will beat up my body because I understand my body is the enemy. Let's read some more. He said, praise God. But I hit my body under the eye and I bring it into subjection. The word subjection means slavery. I make the body a slave to me instead of me being a slave to my body. Most Christians and the ones who fail, who are not good ground, is because their body is in charge. Not them. Body says, let's stay here and drink some latte. Spirit says, get up, come to church. The body says, I know we're supposed to pray, but I was up last night watching HGTV. I'm tired. Spirit says, get up. Let's get, get before God. Amen? Well, he's, now he says now, I, he said, now, I, I, I make my body a slave less, because if I don't, lest that by any means or any way the body can get out, to squirm out, because the, the body is not holy. How many of you find out your body is not holy? Your body is not holy, baby. To your neighbor, your body is not holy. In fact, your body is unholy. Mm -hmm. Paul had a whole chapter in chapter 8, man. He, said, he says, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He said, what I want to do, I don't do, and that what I, that what I do do is not what I don't want to do. He said, who can deliver me from this body of death? In other words, the struggle for a born again Christian, the struggle is not between your spirit and your mind. What it is, it's in your born again spirit and your body. And if you renew your mind, now you need to understand, Satan has access to your mind in this way. Satan speak, he'll get out some demon spirit to get outside your head, and he will, he can speak just like an angel can speak to you. And he'll say stuff to you. I mean, people thinking about suicide, okay, and they, th they think it's their thoughts. It's not their thoughts. That's demon spirit speaking to you. And he's saying, oh, you got such pain, so you can just end it all and there'll be no more pain. He ain't going to be lying because when you leave this body, you're going to find out things are not over. In fact, things can be much worse depending on where you wind up. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. All these negative thoughts, bad stuff, you go, what am I thinking? It ain't your thought. That's why Corinthians said, cast down imaginations. Cast down the images in the mind. Stand up and say, no, I ain't thinking that in the name of Jesus. Get out of here. I'm going to teach you better how to do that. But, uh, Amen. In other words, you can determine your thoughts. Praise God. But understand, those are lying thoughts and those are not yours. So right now, somebody just got delivered from that. You thought I was thinking, it ain't even you. Now you take authority over that devil. So you get out of here in the name of Jesus. That is not my thought. Hallelujah. Now, the body and that demon are gang up, man. They'll gang up together, man. And they'll try and say stuff to you and mess you up. If you listen, if you dwell on it, if you meditate on it, come on, somebody. So he said, now, I do this. Lest that by however means, even though Paul is the great apostle, even though I had preached to lots of people, I could wind up being lost. You mean to tell me the Bible could take something, the body can take somebody like the Apostle Paul and have the guy wind up in hell? Can, if not gonna. Yeah. Now we're talking about, praise God, temperance here. Now, fruit of temperance. Now turn to St. John, chapter 15. Let's see what the Lord Jesus has to say about this. Give me three hallelujahs again, somebody. 
Praise God. Now, in St. John chapter 15, Jesus is speaking. You've got a red letter edition. Praise God. I don't know about these Bible programs where they let you know Jesus or not. Amen. So I'm kind of old school, so I still got my big old Bible in red. Jesus said here, I am the truthful vine. We're true, truthful. I'm the one to tell you the truth. My father's the husband, and my father's the gardener, the farmer, right? Every branch, you're the branch. Say, I'm the branch. I'm the branch. Every branch, now here's the key words, in me. Okay? See, to be in Christ, now you get in Christ, you get born again, but you can get more into Christ. The Greek word for Christ is Christos. It means the anointed one and his anointing. What is his anointing? Called grace. Amen. St. John chapter 1, verse 1, or verse 14 rather. It said that Jesus was full of grace and truth. St. John 16, 23, praise God, the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth. Hebrews 10, 29, he's called the spirit of grace. Amen. He came on Jesus in the Jordan River in John chapter 3. It was then Acts 10, 38 came into being, which reads how God anointed came into being, poured on, spirit on. Amen. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, another one of his names, spirit of grace, hallelujah, spirit of truth, comforter. How God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good, healing all that's possessed of the devil. So that power was stronger than anything Satan come up against. And Jesus didn't do any miracles until he was anointed. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Well, he had grace on him. That's what grace is. Grace, in its fullest form, is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. That's what it is. Not a position. It's not a. Amen. So he says, so every branch in me, so you're following that Holy Spirit, that does what? Does not bear, bear fruit. What fruit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, faith, temperance. Amen. He taketh away. And every branch that bear fruit, he purges it. Now the word purge means he cleans it. Right? Anybody, anybody here ever doing any gardening? Oh, a lot of y'all in here city folk with gardening. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, man, every so often, man, you got you to gotta do what in that thing? You got to weed it out, don't you? Okay, amen? Because if you don't weed it out, what will come up with what you planted will also be stuff you do not want. Right? I mean, I have that happen in my flower beds, man. Man, I go out of town for two weeks or whatever, minister, come back, man, and they had a couple of days of heavy rain. I come back, man, and them weeds be up there trying to be in there. Okay? And if I, if I have to run back out, okay, amen, them weeds be taller, you know. Uh, amen. I, I, you got to do it. I got to pay somebody to do it, but it, it's got to happen. Because if I don't, the weeds will overrun and eventually choke what you planted. So he said, everyone in me has to be purged. There is a cleaning process that takes place or should take place with the believer so that you can produce love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, meekness, and temperance. So God will clean you up. Now, he will not use cancer to do it. He ain't using none of Satan's tools to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But that don't mean God won't clean you up. More on that, more on that in a minute. So he that, uh, he that produces fruit, God will purge it. Why? So you have even more production. How am I clean? Through the word. Most important thing you can have is the reason why I have you lift up your Bible. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. It is God cleaning you up. Come on, somebody. Amen. He said, which I have spoken unto you. Five elements got to be put to that word that's spoken to you. You got to hear it, receive it, believe it, speak it, and then go act on it. 
He goes on to say, he said, now live in or remain, settle down and take a residence. I believe the Amplified says here. In me and I in you, and as the branch cannot produce anything by itself, except you live in, settle down in, take a residence in me, you can't do nothing. The next verse tells you. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that's in me and I in him, he brings forth a whole lot of fruit. But without me, you can't do a thing. Amen. So that means we, we can't brag about what we produce. God's the one who produced it all. And everything you got, God gave it to you. The money in your pocket, God gave it to you. The house you got, God gave it to you. Amen. He was now there's things that you, you did. Amen. There's two sides to that because the Bible says you and God are partners. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he's not saying you don't get no credit. But understand this, at the end of the day, though, there's nothing you could have done without him. You can't even breathe without God. You'd be laying here on the floor. Ooh, ooh. And pass away, man, if God would have turned off the speaker, you'd be all she wrote. Amen. That's why you ought to be glad every morning you get up. You see that sunshine, you ought to say, thank you, Lord, for another day. I don't care if it's cold outside, if it's wet outside, if whatever, too hot outside, you think, but at least you can see it. At least you can feel it, hallelujah. Especially if you're not waking up in some ward somewhere, you don't even know who you are. You ought to give God some praise and glory. You're able to be in the house of God, hallelujah. Every day you ought to thank God for his goodness to you. His mercy endures forever. He said in verse 6, if a man lives in and settles down, and see, that's really following the Holy Spirit. He, he doesn't do it in me. He is cast forth as a branch and is, he dries up. See, here's what happens. He becomes 75% instead of 25%. He is withered. He's gathered up and thrown into the fire and they are burned. Paul said it could wind up taking me all the way to hell. If you live in, settle down, and take a residence in me, and it's why you hear me, son. My words. Okay. Live in, settle down, and take a residence in you. And know what he says. You can ask what you will. Now, the word, the Greek word here, ask, means demand. Not demand of God, demand of the devil who's holding up all your stuff. You can demand what you will and it shall be done in you. My father's glorified when he sees that. Why? Well, amen, I'm, uh, uh, praise the Lord. I got back in time enough to go take my grandson, one of my grandchildren, my grandson, Friday, I got back Thursday. Friday, you know, I, I've been missing on the road, so I got one of my grandsons, and he stays under me to type. And so he, he played a little golf with me, you know. So I took him to golf on Friday. Okay. And so he was out there, and they made it, they forced us to play in a foursome. He's never done that before, which means you got to have two other people who are not me. He's always, always played just with me. But they put us in, they had to play with two other adults than me, kid people he ain't never seen before. Okay, well, seven-year-old kids, you know, he, he ain't so sure about this, right? That little boy stepped up there. He hit a shot. Woo! Look at that shot. Woo! That boy hit some shots. I was like, praise God, that's my boy. <laughs> Why was I, that's my boy? Because he was doing what he saw his papa do. Because I hit a shot too, baby, that was, yeah. Y'all would have said I was PGA Tour. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what God does when he sees you smash slam the devil. Praise God. You got fruit. You got tempers. Satan trying to knock you out. Hallelujah. But you know how to be patient. You know how to praise God. Walk with tempers. You know how to walk in love. And then Satan failed. You slam the devil in Jesus' name. And God says, that's my girl right there. That's my girl. That's my boy. Hallelujah. So he equipped you. Now, you have to be willing to use the equipment. Amen. Now, turn to Titus chapter 2. Somebody shoot that clock, man. Yeah. 
I'm just getting started. Oh. Hallelujah. Titus chapter 2. Well, we're just kind of introducing this anyway. Because I'm my job is to help you become the 25%. But to do it, you have to grow more. Are you still sending me letters about colors of skin. You still infantile. You ain't grown yet. Come on. Who cares what somebody colors? I care less. Come on, somebody. I'm always looking for the best person I could find. Should I not have brought Jim Hockaday here because he was white? Huh? What stupidity is that? Huh? I don't bring enough black speakers. I'm looking for the best speakers. Now, if I can find that's going to teach the word like I know it should be taught. Not like what you like. You don't know the difference. You just be shouting and stuff you don't even know you should be shouting about. It. They said, y'all be shouting, and I'll be going, oh, my God. It's going to take me three weeks to undo what that dude just did. Come on, somebody, because he just taught it totally wrong. Come on. I'm going to tell you another story while I'm at it. I'm going to use up some more, more of my time. When I was a rookie, brand new preacher, I'm sitting in the pulpit back in the day. I'll preach you sitting in the pulpit. Some still do. I'm sitting in the pulpit. I'm brand new. I had my trial sermon. They said, oh, this boy's anointed. He's called and all that. So they had me sit up there. And the senior assistant pastor, he told me, he was preaching Sunday night service. He's going to preach that night. He said, watch what happens here tonight. Yes, sir. I'm listening. I'm a rookie, right? Preacher. He says, I'm going to preach on hog moths and green beans. And he said, and I'm going to tear this church up. They're going to shout like crazy. I'm like, what, is, what does he mean by hog moths? He got up there. He read one scripture, and then he tuned it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Said a few things that kind of rhymed here and there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Man, he told, and then he got, he got to it. He wound it up. Hog moths and green beans. Yeah, they tore that church up. church up and he did he turned around and went to me <laughs> teach me a lesson they ain't listening <laughs> Titus chapter 2 <laughs> verse 1 well, speak thou to things which become sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. Amen. Sound means it is not corrupted. Okay, amen. That the aged or mature men, so now we're going to find out what spiritual maturity has. They are, uh, they are sober. Later I'll talk about that vigilant, praise God. They are grave, oh, here's one, temperate, sound in faith and in love and in patience. The aged women are likewise. Okay, amen. So one of the keys to spiritual maturity is whether or not they have self-control. Whether or not the Holy Spirit is the one dictating what they are doing and not their flesh, not their eyes, not what they hear, not what people say, not what they want. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Then he says, turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Praise God. I think I'm going to be on this a couple weeks. But the 2 Peter chapter 1, and I want you to see, see the verse 5, then I'm going to back up to verse 1 and 2. And beside this, giving all diligence, add, to your faith. Do I have any faith people in here? Yeah. Let me see your hands. You're a faith person. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is a faith church. In fact, it's called Word of Faith. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But nobody said, he said your faith can be added to. Amen. That tells you your faith alone is not enough or you would not have to add to it. 
So he said, add to your faith, to your trust, to your confidence, your belief, your pistis, add virtuous excellence. Uh, amen. And that knowledge, gnosis, you need information. And to knowledge, here it is, temperance, self-control. Now, why this is true, and of course, I'm not teaching all the things in, in this verse, but there's a payoff to this. He says in verse 8, if, for if these things be in you, circle the word in. If they be in you, and they abound. They abound means they increase rapidly. It's a whole lot, not just in you, but you are growing rapidly. If these things be in you and abound, they make. That power in you will work in you. They make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The epic gnosis. Amen. Well, you say, but okay, so what does that do for me? Well, back up to verse 1 and 2. Amen. Big time payoff here. Glory to God. Verse 1, Simon Peter, servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to people who have attained like precious faith. Okay, we got it through the rightness of God. We got it through our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace! Power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All the things the Holy Ghost can do. Well, the Holy Ghost is God. There ain't nothing he can't do. So he said, grace and peace, love, joy, peace, hallelujah, be what? Multiply, radically increase unto, unto who you, how? Through that knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. In other words, the payoff of that, amen, that temperance, the payoff is that now the Holy Spirit has got a free run to do all he does heal your body, provide supernaturally, give you wisdom, praise God, when nobody else knows what to do. Lead and guide and direct you so you bless coming in, bless going out, blessing the city. Open your understanding of how to walk in victory and defeat the devil. I mean, all the things that you need. He is now, praise God, able to do it in an increasing fashion. What's happening to you? You're becoming more mature. But you had to add these ingredients. Now, when I used to teach this years ago, I used to talk about my mama's fried chicken since she's sitting there. Amen. I don't eat the fried chicken the way I used to back in the day. We have now learned about a lot of stuff, ingredients they used to make, you know. They used to make stuff. Y'all remember, you used to take that old, big old Crisco, like, <laughs> and all the other stuff you used to do to make that stuff, right? And we don't kind of do some of that anymore. Hallelujah. But back in the day, man, before we, before we start learning some stuff about nutrition, boy, <laughs> my mama cook a, like, boy, mama cook a platter of chicken. I eat the whole thing by myself. Oh, yeah, with a bottle of hot sauce. Put some Frank Louisiana hot sauce. Ooh, make you want to slap your mama. I mean, I mean, good God almighty. Ooh, woo. See, you, I always add to it. In fact, people would say to me, you don't even taste the food. Do you even know what the food tastes like? Because I don't add it so much to it. Well, he said, you, he wanted to add so much temperance to your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just covered with everything that you're about. You got total self-control. You don't lose it. Amen. Praise God. And guess what? You have that ability. Now you saying that? Well, I just can't. That's not what the Bible said. The Bible says Philippians 4.13, I what? I can do what? All things through the anointed one, his anointing. You know what it said? It strengthens me. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're talking about what is a mark of maturity, adding to your faith. There's a lot more on that, and I'll do that later. Amen. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to leave you with this. Three ways to help you with this area. I ain't even got halfway through what I'm dealing with today. Amen. But I'll leave you with this. Praise God. 
how do I add to my faith and how do I walk in this fruit, this fruit the way I should? Word, will, and actions. Word, will, and actions. Spirit words. Remember James 1, James 1, 22, James 1, 21 says, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul, able to save your mind, will, and emotions. In other words, when you hear what the scripture said, you're not going to be that first person in Mark chapter 4 who heard the word and saying didn't have no, nothing else to do because you just didn't receive it. You said, nah, I don't hear that. I don't accept that. Some of y'all went like that today already. You checked out the moment I started talking about race. You checked out. Black people can't be racist. Somebody told me one time, black people can't be racist. They're, they're oppressed. <laughs> Did you know that black people also used to enslave white people? How much history do you really know? You know that there was some, so much dominance in the black race, quote unquote, not the flesh, amen, that they had white slaves. You didn't know that, did you? In other words, slavery is not something that was endemic just to African Americans. Well, see, you don't, you don't, you don't know your history. Because I can't bring somebody or tell you because, of course, they're the wrong color. Okay. So, amen. So the first one is receive spirit words. Amen. Receiving the word. Which means you have to always put yourself in a position where you're constantly hearing it because you're speaking it yourself out of your own mouth. Praise God. And the Lord was sharing with me about, yeah, there's words, and you taught them recently about this. Yes, sir. About words coming out their mouth. The importance of it. And that the very first thing that God did in establishing his church with Jews and Gentiles was gain control of their tongues with, by speaking with tongues. And look, one of the apostles Paul said, I speak with tongues more than you, the whole church of Corinth combined. He said, forbid not to speak with tongues, all of that. Satan has done everything he could to try and fight that. Why? Because of speaking words precisely what the Holy Ghost wants concerning you. Amen. And that's just, so the word part, Saying what God says. You can't, you can't, got to stop saying, I just can't control my appetite. I can't control my anger. Or I can't control this lust. Or I can't, I can't, I can't, and can't. The scripture said I can't. So first of all, your mouth's going to have to agree with God. When you talk about will, amen, remember the soul is the mind and, and will of an individual person. James 1, uh, Praise God, 121. And 122 goes on to say, praise God, I believe it is 122. Oh, that's the action one I want, yeah. James 122, the action one, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Amen? So then you have to walk it out and you have to act it out. The one with the will is a decision of choosing. Amen. You choose to believe what the Word of God said about everything. You don't just hear it. You choose to believe it. Hearing, receive, believe, act it out. The three, praise God, will put you in position where temperance will begin to grow in you. Amen. And I close with this because I'm out of time. Amen. I was struck recently, as the Lord was leading me to study this again, and I was struck recently when I saw, recently I've been teaching on Wednesday night, I taught the entire book of Jude recently, right? Okay, amen. And, and when you read the book of Jude, the book of Jude is about, well, false teachers, but it also tells you how they became false teachers. And one of the things that listed there, they became false teachers because they didn't govern their appetite, physical food. 
I was struck by how many times in scripture I kept reading about, when you start this subject, I kept reading about it, talked about, amen, temperance with diet in the Bible. And it keeps talking about the food that they had unrestrained food intake. So they let their body eat whatever they want to eat and whatever, whatever they want to do. Praise God. Let their body have control. Okay, amen. That helped the body be stronger to sexual appetite. Amen. They became like Sodom and Gomorrah, for those of you who are with me in the book of Jude. Okay, amen. Which all led to they had to come and come and get a, a teaching that's going to work for them. So they're going to teach grace as. Well, you can kind of forgive me for whatever you want to do. Now you need to get the tapes on that that I was teaching on. I taught the whole book recently. Just finished it about a month ago. Hello, somebody. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I really know I made you uncomfortable when I talked about the plate, didn't I? <laughs> Here's my third close. I tell my daddy. Everybody's class number three. <laughs> Why does weight gain happen? Weight gain happens when you're 18 years of age. Your metabolism and your body is, you at the top, man. Your body is so efficient, super efficient. Man, you could eat platters of fried chicken. You could eat all kinds of cartons of ice cream. You could do all sorts of stuff. I gained a pound. I was so skinny. I could eat stuff. It didn't matter what I ate. I didn't gain. I couldn't, I couldn't gain weight. I mean, I ate and ate because my body was so efficient. But the older you get, the less efficient your body is. If you have the same intake of food, but you don't have the same efficiency, it then results in weight gain. Amen. Praise God. Keeping basic control of your body is 75% food and 25% exercise. Is 75% what you eat, when you eat it, and how much you eat. Amen. Which is why even fasting one day a week would be a good thing. Even one day a month. You do it one day a month, you're telling your body, pow! I'm in control. Stand up with me, please. Let's lift our hands and give God praise for the word tonight. Father, we thank you for the word. We give you praise and glory for it. We are grateful for it. We thank you for it. In the authority of Jesus. Now, I have not dismissed because the most important part of the service is right now. Discipline yourself to this. Every head bowed, please. Every eye clothed in prayer. There might be someone in here that says, well, you know, I am a new Christian. Amen. Thank you for the word today. This will help me to grow and develop in these things. Yes, you will. Amen. Get this tape again and begin to listen, meditate it. Praise God. Make sure you're here next Sunday when I pick up on this part two. Hallelujah. And keep feeding on it. Praise the Lord. But then I want to talk to another group. There are people in here who may not be born again, or I, and I know certain, certainly people watching me online. You are not born again yet. I, I didn't say you're not a nice person. People don't go to heaven or go to hell based on how good they are and not how good they are. Uh, amen. You can't earn your way into heaven because of good works. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, is by grace we are saved. And it says, not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should brag about it. We would brag about how we got into heaven because of how good we was. God said, no, ain't nobody. That's not true. Amen. It said, God so loved the world that he gave, he gave a gift. That gift was his only begotten son. You see, a gift, you don't earn it, you just receive it. You just take it. Jesus was God's gift to you. Amen. So that you could have eternal life. And so you might, your name might be on the church roll. You might have been water baptized. You might be a very nice person. All that's good, but none of that qualifies for heaven. Those things are after you get born again. So if you're not born again, I want to pray with you today. You can be born again and heaven can be your home. Then there are some here who may say, well, I am born again, but I'm not right with God. I'm out of fellowship with God. Well, that's, 
That's what we're talking about, growing up spiritually, helping you, praise God, with these areas. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if we were homologia, if we would acknowledge our sin to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. And the Holy Spirit will help you not to fall into the same thing again. Hallelujah. But come to him. He loves you. Then there are some who may say this. Well, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Can, can you be sure? Yeah. The Bible said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, the scripture was written that you may know that you have eternal life. If you don't know that you know that you know that you know you're born again, you don't know that you're saved, you need to pray with me today. Let's mark this day on 23rd. Praise God. Let's mark this day today. Praise God in Jesus' name. Then there might be someone here that says, I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2.4, which reads, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is critically important. It is critically important. The Lord has really shown me. Praise God. Good things happen when you pray in tongues. The more you pray in tongues, the more good things happen. Hallelujah. Need to, we don't pray in tongues enough. Today you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, overflowing with the physical evidence of speaking with tongues. Amen. You need to be filled today. We want to encourage you to come forward if you are a believer in fellowship with God. And then lastly, there might be someone who says, you know, I'm looking for a church where the word of God will be preached uncompromisingly. Well, if you're looking for a church like that, word of faith is the right church for you. I'm not afraid of congregations. Hallelujah. And I promise to give you the word only, unvarnished. Give you the word, praise God. And people I bring here will give you the word. If they don't, they won't be back here. Because the word, praise God, is what we need. We are the branch. He's the vine. The word is what we got to have in order to produce. Amen. So now our heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Prayer. If you're not born again, you're not sure, you're out of fellowship with God, you you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or you want to join Word of Faith with us, whether it's online membership, wherever you might be in the world, or whether it's physical membership, you're right here, praise God, locally, amen, we'll be glad to receive you. We're about to pray. Just before we pray, I want to give those here in the auditorium an opportunity, praise God, to do what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you won't know me before men, I won't know you before my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. So if you, if you would like to be born again or filled with the Holy Spirit or Praise God. Come back and fellowship with God and join the church. Any one of those five things. You say, that's me. I desire prayer. Pray for me, Bishop. Then I want you to lift your hand wherever you are right now. Lift your hand high where I can see you, please. If you need to be, need any one of those, see a hand right there. God bless you. Come on. Nothing to be ashamed of. Praise God. I did this many years ago, 50, over 50 years ago. I did this. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Another hand over there. God bless you. Praise God. Best decision ever made in my life. Another hand over there. God bless you. Anybody else? That's me. Praise God. Lift your hand high where I can see you, please. A lot of people in here. Praise God. Thank you. Pan back there. Glory to God. Another person over here. Thank you. Thank you, ushers. Anybody else? That's me. Praise God. You may put your hands down. Listen carefully. If you lift your hand for prayer, we're all here because we love you. Amen. We're not here to judge you. All of us have been messed up. Hallelujah. We're here to celebrate with you. If you lift your hand for prayer or you didn't lift it, but you know you should, I want to pray with you now, ma'am and sir. I'm going to ask you to do something courageous. I ask you to gather up your belongings unless you have someone you trust to lead them with. I'm going to ask you to step out in the nearest aisle. Come forward now. Let me pray for you. Come on. Let me pray for you. Come. Come. In the name of Jesus. It was such a powerful service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there was blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's some important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you at the next service.